Okay. Let's check this is all working, the usual malarkey. Yeah. Takes a while for it to sort of flow through. Hello there, Instagram. So I've got this all all working today. I've got a in got a sandwich to go through as well. It's crazy. Um so we've got let me just get rid of that. And that. Um so we've got Instagram. This is on YouTube, Twitter, the Moblox LinkedIn, so not my LinkedIn. If somebody's trying to find it on LinkedIn. It's on the Moblox uh, LinkedIn. But I have posted that on my LinkedIn, obviously. Um, on YouTube, Twitter as well. Um, you'd be glad to hear we've uh, set up a TikTok account, which is uh, kind of behind the scenes Moblox. So we've done a couple of things. So definitely go and sign up there. We need all the help we can get on TikTok. Um, you know, LinkedIn's doing very well. Instagram's growing nice and, nice and steadily. TikTok's new. So... If can, I want to. I want to get that as bigger than Vodafone's TikTok. That's my ambition in life. Um, let's check everything's working here. So we've got SK6. Oh, hello. That's that's Sophia. I always forget that. She's got like cool like, handle. Um, Danny Finney, LMJ official, Lionheart, Lucy, uh, Love Zoe Tunmice. Is that it? Uh, these names all. Uh, Edra Malaya. Else we've got Chris Cohen. Let's see if we've got anybody on uh, LinkedIn. Simon Campbell, hello. Uh, ben Klupatinond. Got that right? Um, hello. Uh I wasn't hello, Ben. I wasn't quite I wasn't quite Ben's asking, was I busting some moves on TikTok? That could happen. Um, I do have some moves. Hasn't happened yet though. <laughs> so there's a little uh, some of the other team they've been busting some moves there, kind of. So go, go and have a look at that. Um, go, uh, got Michelle Shevel, welcome. So we've had quite. Um, I missed a week of this because we were uh, the team we were down at the business show at Exad in London. Quite a big show. I think they were expecting. I think it was like thirty thousand people there. Um, let's get this up here. About thirty thousand people there um over the space of two days so we were sharing a, a stand with scott from the elite business so i've been done a few elite business events as well scott's got um, awards and sort of online uh, publications as well so you haven't you're not doing the elite business definitely go and have a look at that so we we're on the stand i was on the stand on wednesday i did a keynote about technology and how to leverage technology to build your business you know during difficult times and uh I'll try not to use our word today with session. I've talked about that quite a lot previously. There's a lot of other things to talk about as well, but I will come back to, um, you know, difficult markets, difficult times, and how you navigate them. Who else we got? Um, oh, coming in hard and fast now. Matt Jackson, Afferton Bikes. I am honoured. Afferton Bikes have joined. Uh, Damien Doherty. Oh, my God. I've got friends, businesses I'm involved in. Everyone's turning up to check that I just check me out. TikTok, afternoon peers. Hello, Damon. Uh, D, I'm not making it up. Damon's known me for many, many years, and he knows that I've got some moves. Although I have to say, Damon's got a few moves as well. Uh, and usually, when he's doing his moves, we've been kicked out of many nightclubs in the past and over the years. So uh, if we can get Damien on our TikTok, you, we are going to see some definite um, a rise in our followers. I can straight out say it free. Right, so let's, let's start. So we were at the business show last week. Uh, again, uh, we we're signing up people to Moblox. Is, you know, it's, it's a great show, that. It's quite interesting to see that haven't been that many shows for kind of like what, two years. So a lot of people turned up. And um, I always ask people that are sort of wandering around, like, you know, the people who started businesses, people are thinking of starting a business, people in business, you know, people on the stands as well. And um, I always ask you, why are you here? That's my sort of favorite question. And the, the the typical answer is, is that people running a business, starting a business, or got a small business, 
they don't have access to advice or support or you know someone to talk to often simple as that so when i ask them they're kind of they're kind of milling around meeting people just looking out for advice support inspiration um they're listening to the keynotes you know it's kind of free support and advice so the fantastic events but it, it just reminded me of how you know, difficult it can be to access the support you need the guidance you need you know, sometimes the mentors you need we'll come back to mentors for young people later with Caldwell youth um so it's great to see that but also it's frustrating as well so i last week was um pushing my course quite hard um i i don't understand and if you're watching this right and you're interested in business we just like listen to me talk for some reason i won't understand if you're interested in business and startups young companies you know get them signed up to moblox because you get my business course for free and i don't understand why everybody in this country is thinking of starting a business has not signed up for my business course right there's people at these shows they're giving it the big one you know come on at the back buy my course for 997 pounds there's now been discounted to 30 quid and all you're really signing up to is another sales pitch for a course that's going to cost you 10 grand you know my course goes from everything from should you start a business how do you start a business how do you operate a business all the way through to what's a cash flow accounting marketing management people the, the whole kit and caboodle and it's free right moblox join the community is free you'll get additional content about running a business so if you haven't signed up yet please do and if you know somebody who should reach out to them right now i don't care what social media platform email, or even email you use or even snail mail put it in the post send them a flipping send them a postcard just tell them to sign up and i'm i'm partly selling mail blocks so that's my job but actually that course almost killed me to make i gave a thousand of them away during covid to help people out and i'm quite proud of it i think it's worth its while it's worth its weight in gold if you're new to building a business you've got no one really to reach out to and even if you're running a business I mean, little Jamaica, right? One of the uh, sort of founding members of Moblox might even be on here, actually. They usually sort of turn up to the party. I'm not sure. Can't see them yet. They're probably busy cooking up stuff. But little Jamaica, um, they were one of the first people to actually buy my course when, you know, and they, they paid they paid for it. And um, they tell me, I'm not putting words in their mouth, they tell me that it's really helped them uh, sort of, you know, really think about their business and build a plan and have structure and have a process and systems and policies and build a business the way you need to build a business. And most, you know, serial entrepreneurs, they're not any cleverer. They haven't got any better ideas. They've got, you know, they haven't got any, the idea hasn't often got any more chance of success than your idea. It's just that they can execute more efficiently and more effectively. And they don't fall in all the potholes that most entrepreneurs do along the way. What my course is designed to do is help people avoid them. So I'm going to keep banging that drum. Please go and have a look at it. And a uh, bit of exciting news today is uh, another Moblox customer, one of our first customers, um, Cordwell Youth. So big up Karen Ironside there. If you're in, if you're if you're watching or you're listening, we'll be busy again today doing launching an actual charity. And this is supported by um, John Cordwell. So different charity to Cordwell Children. It's aimed at um, helping people sort of um, sort of 16 plus, um, 21 I think it is. To let's actually get it up, shall we? Let's find. Let's get it up. Here we go. Let's stop guessing and um, try and get the facts. Yeah, there we go. So, Cobalt Chill, Cobalt Youth um, is supporting. One sec. What are clicking to do? Here we go. Right. This is a brand new charity um, launched today, um, and again, this is you know Corbell Children. Obviously, is a clue in the name, it's children. This is slightly different. So Corbell Youth supporting at-risk young people, but lots of them. I can tell the story of Daniel from when I was a secret millionaire. Um, you know, eleven to twenty-four through person-centered volunteer mentoring for up to two years. So this increases confidence, increases well-being. It makes a difference, and it, it's always say it's like a rifle. It's like it's like, it's like a bullet. So. You shoot a bullet out of a gun, right? If you're a million, couple of millimeters off, a centimeter off here, down range, you know, you're not going to hit a barn door. You're not going to hit a house. That's never mind. You're not going to hit the farm, probably. Never mind the barn door. So by making changes and providing guidance, support, mentoring, direction, I call this social capital. This is my this is my pet subject. 
And social capital is who you are, where you grew up, what postcode you live in, what your parents did. Did your great grandparents, you know, leave a house to your grandparents, who you left it to your parents, who are gonna leave it to you. So you've got something to leverage against to get your first deposit on your house. You know, what what school do you go to, what university, all this stuff um, makes a difference. And mentoring can be a very important part of it. A mentor is not something to take lightly in these structure. Uh, and it needs a process and you all need to know what you're trying to get out of it. So have a go and have a look at uh, cordwelyouth.org. And uh, Cordwell Youth, they approached us uh, because they needed um, mobile phones, clearly, for the team. So we they were talking to, I won't mention the name, but a, a large mobile phone company uh, that's in a shop that sells food uh, and other stuff. And they have lots of them. Some are called Metro on the high street. And they um, they were priced up and they came to us and we gave them a much better deal. Um, and they've now joined uh, Moblox. So if you haven't seen our first service yet, and I've been talking about this for a while, then you know please go and do have a look at um, Moblox. So Moblox is um, this is our first service we've launched. Um, probably the most complicated that we're ever going to launch. This is Moblox Mobile. We're launching some business service coming down the road. So we say I think called World Youth about five hundred quid. Another company where we dealt with recently seven seven phones. We saved them two thousand eight hundred quid. So it was another company saving two K. Another one today was three and a half K. And this is on sub ten devices. It's nuts. You're being ripped off. Uh, so the mobile provider your mobile provider is typically overcharging you, selling stuff you don't need, unlimited plans, linking your you know your their time to your phone and we're going to change that so we are the the tide the starling the revenue of telecoms and that was our first service and we're going to be launching many many more um what else we got here so the other big news this week they finally be glad to hear we um completed the judging on pitch to peers so the idea i'm going to apologize right now right the idea was a pitch to peers and i did a, i did a van tour with um my partner we, we got in the that the, well it's our van but we Brand did up Moblox and we did a bit of a tour of the UK, which note to self, don't do tour of UK during a global pandemic because you're going to catch whatever's out there. And we did. Uh, and we actually ended up staying at John Cordwell's house. I think we gave half a guest there COVID as well, uh, which was unfortunate. Um, so, but we were supposed to sort of um, launch pitch to peers. And the idea is we put out a call um, for uh, people to respond, competition, tell them about your business, we had uh, another criteria about your sustainability, creating employment, innovation, your ambition, and how you'd use the, the, the grant money, the prize money, which is 10,000 pounds. It's not an insignificant amount of money for most small small businesses and startups. And we're gonna to try to coincide the, um, the the judging and the prize giving with when we launched Moblox. Now, it took a bit longer, so we had to push it out. We finally got to it over the last couple of weeks, and we had five companies um, were pitched to me um so and they weren't sort of aggressive like dragon's den style i wasn't trying to make anyone cry it was like a chat about their business and you can go look on um linkedin the my posts got all the names there and all the businesses we had a real mix which is what we wanted uh but the winner uh, at the end of the day was a uh, e-menu now e-menu run by a chat called joel sarch you're gonna have a look at that so he's um sort of reinvented the way in which you know restaurants and hospitality you need all the help they can get right now how they can actually serve their customers and automate to some extent. And we've all been used to you going to a bar and having a QR code. But normally, just flipping WhatsApp or email to somebody who keyed it into their EPOS system. And he's built a clever bit of hardware, a bit of IP, where he can plug it into their EPOS system. And then his, um, his sort of um, service can talk to that via an API they've already set up. And it, it's seamless. It's easy anyone to set up any system. It means you can reduce your costs, serve your customers better. And he's scaling it up. He's raising money now as well. I think it's SCAS. Yes, I'm not sure. I'm going to have a look him on LinkedIn. Um, and he's putting the £10,000 to good use by supporting a number of small businesses to get on the program. Let's have a look in here. I've got Sophia here telling me what I should be doing. Oh, yeah, she's telling me to do just what I'm doing. So, um, so massive shout out to everyone that entered. Um, we're going to do this again next year. We've learned a few lessons along the way about. Um, how we structure it. Um, so we will be doing pitch to peers again next year. It's going to be bigger and better. Um, and I look forward to it. And I want to thank everyone for taking part. Right. Did I mention we're on TikTok? Right. So yeah, please go and sign up. Right, I've got questions here. So I've got one here. Uh, official Martel. Hello. 
This is from Instagram. So I've got to come on a different screen over here. Uh, your tech founder struggling on how to launch. Where in the UK can I go to be a, to be around the right people and learn? Um, well, so the business show last week um, is a good example of that. Like I was saying, I often ask people, you know, why are you here? And often it's just to soak it up, talk to people, see what's out there, see what other people are doing, see what solutions. Because when you're sat, you know, and it, it can be quite lonely, and you can get cabin fever working away in your business and you don't get out it can be lonely but also you only know what you know you only know who you know and you can look on the internet and there's so much information on the internet there's so much of it it can be confusing and you're not entirely sure what's reliable and what you should be um basing your decisions on so often it is about you know you can't go to one place right it depends where you are you could be in the outer hebrides for all i know where are you doesn't actually say we could be in the Outer Hebrides. I don't know. I grew up in the north of England, you know. When I said to people around me I wanted to go into business, they said become an accountant, which was, you know, they were trying their best, but it's pretty rubbish advice, to be quite frank. So, uh, but, you know, they, they, this is my parents, my neighbours, everyone at my, my school, everyone I spoke to. And when I said I, I wanted to do work experience, it was going to be a joiner, a brickie or plumber, and I wanted to work in the bank. I had to organise it myself. So partly... Um, you have to get out there and meet people, go to events, join your, um, there's, there's a lot, no matter where you are, there's clubs for small businesses, startups, and then if you can afford it or not, there's things like chambers of commerce, depends where you are in your sort of business and whether you've launched it or not. But get out there, shoe level, meet people, get online. This is what Moblox is about, right? Now, we're focused on technology and tools, which is pretty important. Um, if you're looking for someone to get some advice around a, a business or starting a business, join my blocks i'll say it again you'll get my course for free uh and that will give you you know it's not gonna give you all the answers because it, you know it'll be a much longer course trust me but it's 76 lessons 10 and a half hours of chatting to me like this almost about the basic issues in running starting building operating a business so i'll give you it'll signpost you and give the basics so at least you know then or you're better equipped to go and get the real answers or find the real detail. And when you're online reading something and you've watched my video course, because I'm expert in quite a few things, I'm I'm jack of lots of trades and master of quite a few of them. That it used to be not so many, but they're built up over the years. So you'll know whether someone's trying to pull a fast one from hopefully the basic, the foundations that I give to you. But you know, again, it's online, isn't it? So again, um, there's nothing more like um, interactive with humans. So go to every event you can and just talk to people. Even when you think it's not really relevant, just talk to them uh, and ask them what they do, why do they do it, what does their product do. If you're talking to somebody about an EPOS system, you know, for a shop and you're online, you're just going to learn something about how they think and how businesses work, uh, inventory systems, just talk to people. And, you know, the mentoring, if you can find a mentor, and they don't have to be someone in exactly the same business. It could be adjacent. It could be someone that even knows you. But just try to work hard um, to try and find someone who people can actually add some value. But don't just go into mentoring there blindly. That needs some structure. You both need to know what you're getting out of it and plan it out. Right. I've got dry mouth and forgot to get a bottle of Voss. So again, I'll keep going as long as there are questions. Uh, clue in the title. It's a QA. and a so I need questions, and then I can I can give um, answers. It looks like so far that um, Instagram's on fire today. So we've got a Yousaf1981. What advice do you have, peers, feeling the recession? I mean, these are quite big, vague questions, but I'll give it a go, right? Um, I mean, the recession impacts people in um, a huge variety of ways, uh, personally. And those in business, that's what everyone forgets, said this every week, is that you're getting squeezed in both directions. So the cost of living is going up, the cost of just living, buying stuff, eating, heating is going up. But at the same time, if you're in business, you might find that your income is going down. So you might be looking at, you know, these the postal workers looking for, you know, 10% or the or various other public sector workers as well. Uh, people in private sector want, you know, 5 10% pay rises. Not ideal, inflation is 11%, but at least they're getting a pay rise. If you're in business, you might find the, your actual income is going down. So it's um, it's the worst of both worlds, very, very difficult. But the point about recessions is I was at an event um, like before last at Goldman Sachs. Boy, have they got a nice office. Um, and Goldman Sachs, if you don't know, 
is one of the sort of one of the leading um, global investment banks. And this was the the wealth management side. I used to be a investment banker at a, a bank called Credit Suisse, First Boston. Now Credit Suisse, which is struggling a bit these days. Um, but Goldman Sachs had an event with their wealth management. This was connected. Connected is a, a platform helps companies raise money and also so it aggregates and manages data as well, coming out of those uh, businesses for their their various stakeholders. So Roy Vitamin, and I was on a panel, and they were talking about the recession. And some things are harder. So raising money, we're raising money at Moblox. Um, it take, takes longer. Uh, it could be a more painful process. The money's still out there. Institutions have to deploy money within a certain period of time, so they have to get it out of the door. Otherwise, you know, their, their investors are going to be asking what's going on. Private individuals can sit in their hands a bit longer sometimes because just to see what the lie of the land is going to look like. But again, you know, people high net worth individuals still have capital. They're not typically worrying about the gas bill, to be honest with you, luckily for them. Um, so the world's will get more difficult and it depends where you are, what your background is as well. Um, is this, yeah, so your environment's so important, it doesn't help if you're in a deprived area, how to find a mentor. Blah, blah, blah. So, the point is you've got to be positive so it is going to be difficult you've got to plan for it personally and in business as well it's going to go on for at least 18 months depending on where interest rates go to if interest rates go up that means things are more expensive debt mortgages less money going around so it sucks demand out of the market so that might extend um a recession if interest rates are still high and they tend to be high or will be pushed higher if inflation um stays where it is or or even if it gets worse so the thing is to plan for it. But the good news is, is that many, many very successful businesses were started in very difficult times. Um, the companies like, you know, Moblox, for example, where we're trying to save people money. So it's kind of, it kind of coming in our direction in many ways. Airbnb is another example. Um, nice to put Airbnb and Moblox in the same sentence, comparing them. But Airbnb, you know, was when it was difficult for people to, you know, afford to go to conferences because of the hotel costs. So they, you know, they, they created an, an air bed and breakfast an air bed and breakfast service. So, and on the other side of that, if you get through it, there's less competition and the money's still out there. Economic story is cyclical. It is very unlikely, very unlikely, that it's going to continue going down forever. You know, the government and the governments around the world pull the levers they can and, they, and the things change and it's a cycle and it will come back. And then, we'll, you know, there'll be another boom bust um, cycle again. So on the other side, it can be very, a great place to grow, great place to um to make money. Uh, Simon Campbell said hello. Right, I'm going to work from the bottom down. Here we go. Right, you can't see this on Instagram. Uh, Michelle Chevel, I've been approached to partner with a business in Africa. Africa is a big place um, to white label our products. Can you recommend a business that can help with legalities and guidance? Um, off the top of my head, no, I, I can't, but I can give you some general advice. So one is, if you're going to different, I don't care where it is, what continent you are actually, there are many, many, many skeletons washed upon the beaches of America, of startups and young businesses that thought they could just tip up there, do what they do here and make a, make a load of money because uh, people speak the same language and they're, they're kind of, uh, they think they're the same and they're not. And that's America. So if you're turning up to, you know, South Africa, you absolutely need to have trusted partners and boots on the ground. Um, and that's not, I'm not sort of saying anything in particular about Africa, it's any continent. But in some places, the, the chances of you losing your shirt, quite literally, um, are higher. And Africa is uh, one of those places potentially where you really, really do need to spend time there, build relationships, do your due diligence, do your homework, use trusted names. Um, you know, one of the, temptations is is to be cheap and look for cheap advisors or a cheap lawyer you know some some back street somewhere don't do that you use reputable firms and names that have provenance and a history and a brand and things that you can check out and initially that's where you should start it's gonna be more expensive but it reduces your risk and it makes sure that you are you know someone's not going to pull a fast one on you and then as you as you build relationships you establish relationships you can then maybe look at you know, different opportunities because what you're going to build is a network. But there are many, many fantastic um, advisors, lawyers in any of these continents, but you can't rely on anybody really apart from yourself to go and work out 
who the best person is, who the, what the best firm is for you by spending time there, looking people in the whites of their eyes and doing your homework and finding out for yourself. China's the same, no different. You have to go and spend time there. You know, you have you know all these stories of people go to see a factory and you know someone else comes to an hour later and they've changed all the signs. You know, this stuff happens. So I'm not even joking. Um, and it depends how much money people have gone into other markets like China, Africa, even America, and lost their life saving because they didn't do their homework. So be very very careful and um, and make sure. Now, if you're going to white label clearly, um, what you can do is look for people here. That are reputable and you can do your homework on that have expertise in Africa. You always have to go there clearly. If you're white labeling, you want to maybe find the business that uh, it sort of import and exports into that particular continent, whatever continent or country you're interested in. And again, there's no easy answer to that. That's just shoe leather and homework and talking to people and getting out there. But making sure I'm, I can't say I used to be a lawyer, right? Can't say it more is do your due diligence do your homework and get a good lawyer and make sure that every I is dotted and every T is crossed. Otherwise, you can find very quickly that you lose your shirt. I don't mean fraud particularly either. It's just you know different ways of doing business. And um, it could be a zero-sum game. You just don't want to be on the zero side of that equation. However, I do know people in Nigeria so ping me on um, LinkedIn and uh, give me more detail and I'll see if I can uh, point you in the right direction. I was actually in Soho House, which is a private club in London the other day, and a guy came up to me, I don't know if he's, don't know if he's listening, and he said, hi, good to meet you. You can recognize me. I said, hello. And he said his, um, his uncle is going to be, you know, I think the prime minister or leader of Nigeria in the next couple of months or something like that. So you never know, you can bump into it actually, and that's why. What I find is, is that, if I'm at sort of a sitting at an, an office or in a corner like this somewhere from my home, and um, you know, you, you think you think you're, you're getting on with life, that's great. The minute I go somewhere, uh, it can be anywhere literally, I bump into somebody uh, and have an interesting conversation and I learn something. And that's the key thing about getting out. Natasha Poole, hello, Natasha. Uh, again, so this is Instagram. Hi, Piers. I've been working with e commerce brands, getting ready for Black Friday. Do you have any advice for small businesses trying to run Black Friday deals or still trying to show value in their products? Um, quite interesting, I was talking to one of um, the company we're going to be working with on the digital marketing, and he was saying, don't do it. He basically said, look, unless you're a retailer uh, and you're trying to do, you know, 75% of your sales in the next two months, literally, for the year, because it's been quite a slow year already, then, you know, it's a very difficult time to actually sell anything. So unless you completely drop your prices, unless you can do something about your margin, you get a huge amount of volume, then you know, you're going to make less money uh, per, your unit economics are not going to be fantastic. But the issue is, is that he was saying that, um, this is using Facebook actually, I know that Facebook's cost, the CPM has gone up by, that's the sort of cost of advertising on Facebook, has gone up by four times recently. Now it's gone up by another two and a half. So, you know, you just do the maths on that. So. It becomes very, very expensive to sell and market and convert. And then when you're converting, you're converting a massive discount. So some companies, and you might be one of them, you have to do it. Because this is when, you know, if you're selling, I was an investor on Dragon's Den in their Wonder Bee, the children's books, and I was on the Tube the other day. And um, I was actually watching Sky as well. And then adverts on the Tube, was adverts on Sky, all over the place. Because they are going to absolutely kill it during Christmas because it's a perfect present for anyone with young children. Um, so if, if that's your business, you don't have much choice, but but you should have planned that, uh, planned ahead for it. If you're not, and it's not massively important to you, like Moblox, good example, and we sell our service all year round. Um, uh, personally, and this is a personal opinion, you know, avoid the temptation just to completely drop your trousers, as the, as the, uh, the proverbial saying goes. Um, to try and sell things at a ridiculously low margin um, and when the cost of marketing has gone through the roof. You might find it's not really doing any favours in the long run. And I still don't fully understand, actually, a lot of the economics and the Black Friday deals. You look at them, you look at the 40% discount, 50% discount. So unless the, unless the headline price creeped up beforehand, you know, 
There are very few products, physical products, um, where somebody can give away a 40, 50% discount or hit on the margin and still make money. So there's something going on often in terms of the actual headline pricing. Um, so just, just have a think about that. But don't get don't get carried away with it if you, if it's going to cause you any sort of financial grief, especially if you're selling things where you have to wait to get paid. Because then if people don't pay you or go out of business in the interim, in the new year, because a lot will, trust me, um, you might find yourself in a very sticky, sticky position. The one from Instagram here, uh, Phenem. How do you know if you need to shut down a business and stop working on it? That is a fantastic question. Actually, one of my favorite questions. People ask me sometimes, all the time, um, if you've got one piece of advice for entrepreneurs, what would it be? Or anybody running a business? And it's this. Uh, well, there are other ones, but this is one of them. So when you're, when you're, when you're running a bit, I've been there, right? When you're running a business and you know, it's going quite well and you, you, or you've got a startup and you're, you're trying to work out is there a market for your product? And it, there was some point where you know, and I've had quite big businesses that, that have had this experience or I've had it with them, you kind of know that it's not going to work out. The market's not as big as you thought it was going to be. You can't get to those customers in a cost-effective way where there's enough money left to actually you know, leave a margin for you. Your product's difficult to produce, more expensive than you thought, it's more complicated, the people aren't available. You know, whatever the reason, there comes a moment a day where in your gut you know this isn't gonna this isn't gonna go well. However, the issue is is that entrepreneurs, small business owners, people that have spent a lot of time, effort, energy investing in that business, you know, trying to trying to bring their dreams into fruition. You don't want to give up, right? And as an entrepreneur, especially, it can be different if you're just running a business. It's not, it doesn't mean you're an entrepreneur, different things. Even if you've been running a business for years, I've got your corner shop, right? And Tesco and Metro and the flipping co op open opposite you, right? It caused you a serious problem. You can fight it. You can, um, you can pivot. You can do a couple of things. But there might come a day where you realize that this is not going to work out. So what you have to do is, I call this, don't chase rabbits down holes, right? When I started out, I chased rabbits down holes because you thought, no, 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 I can fix it. I'm going to get it. I can get it. I can get it. And suddenly you're stuck in this hole. You can't reverse out and you're in a bit of trouble. Uh, and so will, so will your stakeholders. We have to do sometimes is just stop, take an objective view, seek counsel from other people, get them to look at the situation. If you've got a company, speak to an insolvency practitioner even and get their advice on your sort of legal um obligations for your to your shell to your stakeholders which rapidly turns into your creditors when you're in a difficult situation or your if you know if your mum and dad are investing in or your friends and family just say look look i, I, try, I try my best it's not working out <clears throat> and um you know i'm thinking of stopping just be honest with people but it comes a point where you have to stop because you have to stop get out of the hole before you get stuck in it and just fill it in and move on and what you'll do, and people might lose money, people might you know, be upset, but you know, as long as you've tried your best, you've gone to bed every night knowing that you've done everything you can, that's all you can do. There's always risk to building and starting businesses. And if they don't work out, and, and if you've done your best, you know, you have to move on to the next one. And what you'll find is when you move on to the next one, you won't make all the same mistakes. You learn. And that's what happens. That is the process. Uh, it's, it's like science where you, you, know, you put two liquids together in a test tube, whatever, or two chemicals, expecting a result, doesn't happen it doesn't work out you, you, you try another experiment and that is in business now with, with business is different because you've got stakeholders people might have employees you might have you might have a, a landlord there's all people that can be impacted by it but you've got to be very subjective and honest about it when that day comes stop that's the answer right quite a few here so again, um, don't forget to join the uh, Moblox community. Um, so Instagram, especially TikTok now, and uh, LinkedIn as well. Join my YouTube channel. There's always videos are on there as well. Uh, if you've got a mobile phone, I'm sure you have, please do move to Moblox. You want to beat the big guys, right? We're cheaper, we're better. We're on the number one network. You get a better app, content. There's no reason not to. We don't rip you off. We're not trying to sell you a limited plan when you use six gig of data a month. Move to Moblox Mobile. Just go to um, the website and you can go through it or do it through the app. Um, right, let's have a look here. And you can do that. Click my new banner. You can do that from um, you know four pounds fifty a month. All right. 
Let's have a look in the chat. LinkedIn user. Um, all right, Simon Campbell. Again, uh, sorry, on screen, we can't see this. So look into, look into Simon Campbell coming in from LinkedIn. Looking to employ clerical staff. All right. Any advice where to look or where to advertise? I mean, by clerical, I haven't seen that word for many years, actually. You mean admin. Um, I mean, there's... Pfft, certainly websites with people on there and um it has become very competitive you know as you know there are now more vacancies in the uk than there are people to actually fill them it's nuts um some of them are skilled some are unskilled in terms of clerical stuff there's a a quick google search you'll find there's lots of websites where they want people who are on short-term contracts uh to you know recruiting people who become um who become employees there's no no shortage of those. I won't spend too much time on that one. A LinkedIn user. How many companies am I involved in? So my, my day job, and I mean like all day, every day, is Moblox. Um, this is something I, you know, drew on a back of an envelope. Well, actually it was an A1 piece of paper, like a big envelope, about three years ago. And, you know, it's been like any business. Because you've been on telly, right? You, you've done a few successes here and there. It doesn't mean you have all the answers. So it's been just like anyone setting a business up. Um, it's been super complicated to create a mobile phone network, which is our first product, um, just because of the nature of it and integrating into very large telcos and the billing and everything. So it's been quite hard work. So that that is the day job. That's that's my baby, so to speak. I'm also, I don't know if I still, uh, I don't know if I'm still watching, the one earlier, Afferton Bikes. So I was a co-founder of um, Afferton Bikes. So I spent a lot of time and energy and working with the team there to put that business together to raise initial money. Now, I'm not involved in day-to-day -day at all. It's run by uh, Dan, Dan Brown, who's uh, turned into a, a proper CEO now, running that business, and it's based in Wales. So it's a fantastic business, you know, building these amazing bikes using the latest technology that are winning races and, you know, World Cup races. Um, it's a great business, and it's based in Wales, so in, which, you know, and it's been backed by the Welsh government as well. So it's a fantastic story and every sort of uh, angle that you come at it from so i'm involved in that uh when they need me um and i'm a, i'm i'm investing in various businesses one of the one i'm most um interested in set up by a friend of mine called uh, charles black called scent and what charles is doing and this is bonkers he is de deploying a constellation of satellites around the whole of earth some are orbiting some are geostationary he's already de deployed the first one that will provide all of us imagine your app now we could look into it of 8K video of all of Earth in real time. Now, I could start to go through the applications for that, but there are too many of them. It's, it just changes our view of Earth. And this is an idea that Charles had when he was 18, about 30-odd, so old he is now, but over 30 years ago. So that's something that um, I'm an advisor to that business as well. I'm an advisor to Sky, Diversity and Inclusion Advisory Council. It's got a big business. And I'm also an advisor to a automotive business, which... Um, we're going to announce that quite quite soon. So there's some things where it's sort of um, advisory. There's some things where I'll be like a shell or investor, where I'll kind of dip in and out depending on my involvement in the business. Some are kind of co-founder where my skills or access to the networks, whatever it might be, comes in useful now and then. But as they get bigger, they, they tend to not to need you as much. And uh, But Moblox is the day job, which is why I need you to join and why I need you to move your mobile phone contract to because we want to beat the big guys because they're ripping everyone off. That's Michelle actually saw me at the business show. Well done. Right, let's have a look. So if you've got any more questions on um, LinkedIn, YouTube, fire them in. I think I've covered most of them there. Um, but as, as usual, Instagram is uh, killing it. What have we got here? Right. HH2H. Is there anything, this is Instagram, would you, is there anything you would change about your career journey to date? So, no. I mean, I, I, was, a, I was a lawyer. I qualified. I left law. Everyone goes, well, why did you do that? You know, would you qualify as a lawyer? Was it a waste of time? No. Because I wouldn't qualify as a lawyer. I would never have gone into city investment banker. And that got me into finance and fundraising and, you know, where I made some initial money initially, allowing me to do other things. 
So no. So obviously the obvious answer is, is you know, it's the things that didn't go to plan. But there's nothing in my career, in terms of career, that hasn't gone to plan or haven't learned from. There have been failures. There have been things that um, have not gone to plan. There are things that have cost me a lot of money. Um, but, you know, you hide under your duvet for a week. Uh, you know, you speak to the, your people and your stakeholders. And then you you, you go again. And uh, you've learned something. And so there's no... There's nothing. I mean, there's things in your personal life, I guess, you think you would have done differently. Well, I'm not going to go into those. But in business and my career, no. You've got to remember my background. People look at my CV and they think, oh, Piers was a, he's in hedge fund, hedge fund manager. He raised finance for hedge fund venture capital. He worked at a big investment bank, Credit Suisse, first boss in emerging acquisitions and leveraged buyers. Before that, he was a lawyer. And before that, he went to Manchester University and did law and accounting and uh, he got a prize for law and economics. So, you know, he's got a career path that is then quite an obvious steady one with the, the obvious stepping stones. If you start at the bottom of that journey, right, I don't have a clue. I don't have a scooby-doo. I don't know what a flipping difference between a law and a barrister was when I did my law degree, right? When I was in my second year of my training contract as a lawyer, I realized that I didn't want to be a lawyer. I wanted to be one of the investors. I was a venture cap at a venture capital focused firm. I wanted to be one of the venture capital investors or one of the guys they're investing in. That's where all girls, it was more guys than to be fair, that I wanted to invest, be invest doing the deals. Didn't want to be the lawyer. And a friend of mine there, and I'm still friends, more of his brother these days, many years later, um, said to me, you should, you, you should become an investment banker. And I said, what's an investment banker? I didn't have a clue. Right. So for me, it was it was a, a struggle on every step. But through sort of bloody minded determination, I managed to kind of move on and do the things that I wanted to do. So every every step I made was fascinating. It was hard work. It was a challenge. It was an achievement to get there. I wasn't sitting there thinking, oh, well, you know, uh, I'm so gutted that Goldman Sachs didn't give me a job. I ended up at Morgan Stanley. You know, what? it just wasn't me at all. It was a different journey. And I'm still learning today. Uh, and I'm still starting businesses today. Um, and I, I'm getting on a bit now. But this is, I love the process. It's fantastic. But Aman there. Hello, Aman. Aman's uh, been designing and working on our app, which is... Uh, you can go to um, the App Store, Moblox, download it right now, whether you're on uh, iOS or Android. Um, who else we got here? Lucas J.W. Jones. Does Moblox do phone insurance as well? We don't do phones yet, but we're going to be doing it. So we're going to be leasing devices, uh, not just phones either, laptops, um, LCD TVs, printers, maybe even white vans and vans and maybe even cars one day. So we're going to be leasing assets, whether it's a phone or not. When we start doing that, we will start rolling in insurance. So we are talking to people about that. It's just that we've been very, very focused initially on building the basic service. Uh, I say basic. This is super complicated, building a mobile phone network. The first mobile phone network built for business, and it is built on the number one UK network. Um, it's the one the police use. Um, we've got another. Okay. Right. So I think I'm probably going to wrap it up let's see if we've got any more here on instagram charles norton business charles norton business are you the chap on the flipping m1 <laughs> the, the m6 that pulled up beside the van i don't know if you're still watching but um one of the beauties of doing this stuff right i don't know if this is the same chap or not i've got a funny feeling it is um is I, I do these things, right, and I'll go to the business show and I'll give a keynote and someone will come and talk to me and then ask for some advice and, you know, and uh, I get bombarded, but I, I can't help myself. I just you know, I want to talk to people and just impart any advice I can, even if I don't know the answer. I'll try and point them in the right direction. And you kind of, you move on, you get on your life. And about twice a year, I can be anywhere, somewhere, sometimes not even in the UK. And somebody... <laughs> yeah, it is him actually. So this is this story, right? Charles Norton business. He does um car transportation. So big shout out to his business. So we were in the we were doing the um the van tour I mentioned at the at the top of this. And we're going at the M1 M6. I think it was rainy, it was dark, it was just traffic, it was at a standstill basically. And there's this van, this like car transporter behind us trying to get up the side. And I thought, oh no, I've obviously cut this, cut this dude up. He's not very happy. And he, he comes up the side of us and he's like, Wind the window down. I'm like, oh god. So wind the window down. I'm like, sorry, I can help you. He's like, I knew it was you. You recognize the van and the brand. 
he obviously knew Mo Blocks. And he said to me, um, I didn't know exactly what he said, Charles, right? So forgive me if I don't get this quite right. But he said something along the lines of that, um, you know, we had a conversation or I met you or I watched something a couple of years ago and I went on and started my business. And now he's just put it here on their Instagram. He's got a car transportation business with 4 million of turnover, right? Which by any stretch <laughs> is flipping fantastic. What a result. And I'm sure it wasn't all because of me, Charles, but, you know, I, I had a, a part to play. I don't know how big or small in that journey. So every, every, about twice a year, sometimes a bit more, someone comes up to me literally and says, hi, Piers, you don't know who I am, but you did this talk X, Y years ago. You said this to me. And at the afterwards, you had a chat with me and you gave me this advice and I took it and I went away and I started a business or changed something or did something. And now here I am today. I'm successful. I've got a successful business. I'm my own boss. I'm happy and I want to thank you. And that, that makes it all worthwhile. Um, uh, fiddling with my camera and trying to get Instagram to work and doing these things. Because sometimes you realize I'm looking into this camera. I'm looking into the ether. But, uh, you know, it's great to see the people who are actually out there. And even if it was warm, even if it was just myself and Charles chatting on this, and then two years later, I, that happens. And that's one of my favorite stories, Joe. Everywhere I go, uh, there are others, but that's the best one, being pulled up on the flipping M1 by a chap telling me that, uh, I think you're with your wife as well, uh, that your your car transportation business uh, was partly due to um, um, some advice or help or guidance I gave you many years ago. And we've got a little Jamaica here as well, who just popped in as well. So little Jamaica's another one with the sort of early Moblox um, fans. Well, fans are the right word, is it? Um, supporters, I guess. And I think um, Little Jamaica's moving to Moblox. I'm getting them there, getting them there. It's getting a new phone. Uh, I still haven't got up to taste your food yet. It's ridiculous. I've got an idea with them to talk about um, doing a, a, a Moblox food van and a few festivals next year. Or say sponsor the food. And what better food to sponsor than Caribbean food? Um, so Little Jamaica's another one where, they, as I said earlier, they, they did my bought my course. Uh, when he had to pay for it and they have told me that it helped them um, and it helped them bring some structure and thought process to how they built their business and they seem to be going from um, strength to strength and Charles Norton and business you want me to do your podcast ping me on um no I don't care how on uh probably LinkedIn's best and uh I'll get on it all right any more questions here Right, so don't forget, join the Moblox community. So we've got TikTok now. So if you haven't joined TikTok, do it right now. I'll wait. TikTok, Instagram, um, LinkedIn as well. Um, but most of all, please join Moblox. We're going to start um, we keep building software now. We're getting there. It just takes time. We've got priorities to um, start issuing more content and newsletters and sort of um, adding other services as well. That's going to all be happening um, quite soon. Any more questions? There we go. Any advice on raising funds for holiday caravan sales business? That's quite interesting. So, you know, I've got a van conversion. Um, I, I converted a Fiat Giacato. It's a uh, long wheelbase, not extended high top, not super high, the kind of mid-high. And we converted that into, it looks like um, it's got windows in it. but It's not quite like an Amazon delivery van, but it's quite stealth from the outside. You wouldn't know. But inside, it's like a private jet. It's got heated floors. You, know, you can live off grid. I went to the Anthropy, which was uh, like the Davos of the UK, at the Eden Project in Cornwall a couple of weeks ago. I literally lived in the car park for three days. It's got a shower in it, toilet, the works. Everyone was like, are you that girl living in the van in the car park? Um, but Tom, who um, did the conversion, fantastic uh, craftsman um, in um, up near Liverpool there, he, you know, been looking at, you know, that kind of business, a van. So I have actually looked at this. I don't understand caravans, or I've kind of had a posh caravan, which was a boat. That's like a, that's like a posh caravan, isn't it, really? But I don't know about I don't know much about caravan sales. The only thing I would think is is that it hasn't changed, has it, in in so many years? I mean, sometimes I, I will go to like you know some caravan side just to get from in the van. You need a water refill. You've got to empty something. You need, you need something. Or just charge it up. And I look at this place, and these haven't changed since like they've been fifties, and. I think there's a place in the market for like a slightly upscale, I don't know if it's caravans though, might be more vans, van life, not tents or motorhomes, I'm not sure. And there's a fan line between a motorhome and a caravan. But um, 
it hasn't changed and that can be updated something can be done where people actually want to go to a single different generation um it's just so dated the way those things operate the way they look the way they're structured and uh you know you want something which is like you can pitch up to in the summer which is like a it's like a mini coachella wherever you're going there's something going on there's a food van there's a great few um uh what's it called now mine's gone blank stayed there a few times one up near um in the midlands which is like um it's more for sort of vans really but it's like a cool kind of bohemian place and they've got like a silver streak it's got a little shop there and it's quite cool and they've got like you know fire pits and that, i think that's where it should go i think you might get a new generation then otherwise i'm not sure that the, 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 the caravanning market will be as big as it is in 20 years with millennials and gen z as it is today so it's like any other market look at it go and read the book blue ocean strategy great book it's about looking at markets that exist and doing it differently richard branson's a great example of that whether it's jeans whether it's coke whether it was um you know trains planes uh, now virgin voyages space whatever it is a lot of well, space it doesn't really count it's things that already existed you just go and do differently and better and you don't try and compete with the existing competition you do something where the existing competition can't compete so that's a great book blue i advise everyone in business to go and read it blue ocean strategy you haven't got to invent something new all the time just do what exists what's already out there to do it better and i'm pretty sure you can do that in the caravan sales business I mean, you're talking about sales now so selling them so again it, it, it's a sales process isn't it? it's about i don't know they're, they're kind of quite sort of um standard objects in many ways um i, I don't know I, I know more about vans than i do about caravans i have to say it's not really my thing um but van life that 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 kind of people living on the move really the sort of digital nomads um is definitely interesting it's definitely going to be a growth market it can be quite hard to sort of live um any way you want to in the uk but some countries like the us there's, there's more more ability to go and do that right are we getting to the end now yes i think we are so again um Move to Mailbox Mobile. I really want you to get out there um, and go and have a look at it. If you haven't looked at it yet, go and have a look at our um, our website. Have a have a flick through, and we're, we've kind of gone through all of the um, kind of ticked all the boxes. Really, you know, Mailbox is um, carbon neutral as well, so we're number one network. We save a fortune. If you've got like five employees, you talk, you talk about thousands of pounds. Um, only one month contracts or international calls are ridiculously cheap, like US, India, Europe, 2 p.m. and it. We give back to charities like Corwell Children, and we've been working with Corwell Youth, um, well, B Corp, or B Corp pending, so almost a B Corp, and uh, carbon neutral as well. So, very exciting. Uh, and a lot of people are sort of moving. So, we want you to join us and don't get ripped off, save some money, join Moblox. And I really do thank you for joining me. Uh, I know you've all got things to do, you're all busy. Thank you, little Jamaica. Thank you, um, Sukhavachana, is it? Uh, what's it James Carlos. And a big shout out to Chris Norton Business for uh, reminding me of our conversation on the M1. Uh, that was something I will, uh, I will never forget. Thank you very much. We'll leave it there. I'll just kill off um instagram here and uh so hopefully same time same place next week uh, have a good one goodbye